Robin Hood Radio presents Stage Right or Not with Michelle Willems. Michelle is a longtime journalist and herself is a published playwright of several theatrical works. She's a frequent contributor to the Huffington Post, Daily Beast, and the Atlantic websites. Well, more hopeful hints of reopenings. One notice I received read, I would like to invite you and a guest to attend the world premiere of exquisite corpse company's Zoetrope, written by Eleanor Vandenberg, Leah Barker, and Emily Krauss. The production will be presented in Brooklyn. Over 35 minutes, the limited audience experiences an interactive COVID-19 safe live performance and plays a role in dictating the way the story ends. Well, that story could hardly be more of the moment, following a biracial relationship as they navigate quarantine, Black Lives Matter, the election, and their families. Okay, that one starts May 1st. Again, check out the Exquisite Corpse Company. Along somewhat similar lines, so you have a few weeks before this one arrives, is A Dozen Dreams, an immersive theatrical installation based on the pandemic-inspired dreams of 12 leading American playwrights. Produced by On Guard Arts, A Dozen Dreams premieres at Brookfield Place in New York City on May 13th for a limited engagement through May 30th. Audiences can make their reservations by visiting On Guard at engardearts.org. And you can visit actorstheater.org, which is doing something kind of similar called Block Association, produced out of Louisville, in which the audience becomes part of a neighborhood discussion, breaking up into groups, and so on. Is all that theater? Uh, Who knows anymore? Now, those are new, innovative, and relevant. Here's old and hopefully still relevant. Joining the Mint Company's streaming lineup is N.C. Hunter's A Picture of Autumn. And this one made its debut on February 11, 1951, in a one-night tryout performance presented at the Duke of York's Theatre in London. Despite positive reviews, no producer ever picked the play up, and that was the end. Well, until companies like The Mint have rescued it. As for other streaming coming up, we have The Royale, R-O-Y-A-L-E, available through May 16th and found on Broadway On Demand. Now, this Obie award-winning play is about a charismatic African-American boxer, Jay the Sport Jackson, directed by Rachel Chapkin, featuring McKinley Belcher, Chris Davis, Montego Glover, John Lavelle, and Clark Peters, who you'll recognize from The Wire. This was originally done on Lincoln Center's Mitzi Newhouse stage. So, again, you can find that one on Broadway on demand. Now from Royale to Royals. Well, not really, but many are talking about the much abbreviated or speed-performed National Theater production of Romeo and Juliet which is available on PBS's Great Performances. It stars Josh O'Connor as Romeo, and he played Prince Charles on The Crown, which explains my royal train of thought. The play normally takes about three hours, yet the New York Times says this emotionally satisfying and highly theatrical film version scores point after point while whizzing past or outright cutting, ending at about 90 minutes. Well, sounds like the perfect taste of Shakespeare for the young and the restless crowd. For musical fare, check out the York Theatre Company this week. It is presenting an evening with Sheldon Harnick and friends, giving audience members some of the celebrated songs that Harnick has created in his 60-plus year career. These include his collaborations with composers such as Richard Rogers, Joe Raposo, and Michelle Legrand sprinkled with some behind-the-scenes anecdotes from such hit shows as Fiorello, She Loves Me, and Fiddler on the Roof. Leading into the evening, the York's producing artistic director shares a special birthday conversation with Sheldon Harnock himself. And there's more music with Sutton Foster. Her show is called Bring Me to Light, which premieres this Wednesday at 7 p.m., and it can be viewed on demand through May 31st, so you have some time on this. There's a slight fee, and uh, it also includes names like Ralph Sparza and Kelly O'Hara, so it's probably worth a small fee. Sounds good for the whole family. Speaking of which, 
I remain in Los Angeles, where the city's Geffen Playhouse has just announced the world premiere of a live, virtual, and interactive, another one of those, theatrical adventures for young audiences. The Door You Never Saw Before, that's the title. The Geffen has had a highly productive pandemic by doing non-traditional theater, magic, illusion, and the like. This one, the whole family will seemingly enjoy. Again, go to the Geffen Playhouse's site for reserving seats to the door you never saw before. Also out of Los Angeles from the Skylight Theater comes one that sounds either like today's headlines or a Lin-Manuel Miranda song. It's called The Shot. How's this for a tease? Before Catherine Graham became the publisher of the Washington Post, she was a wife with a secret. This one is written by Robert Robin Gerber, directed by Michelle Joyner. It features Sharon Lawrence, an actress familiar to TV viewers. Again, that's on Skylight Theater through May 2nd only. And then we are offered two sisters and a piano by the highly creative New Normal Rep, set in 1991 during the Pan American Games in Havana, while the Russians are pulling out of Cuba. This play portrays two sisters, Maria, a novelist, and Sophia, a pianist, serving time under house arrest. Passion meets politics when a lieutenant assigned to their case becomes infatuated with Maria. And another well-known TV actor, Jimmy Smith, stars in this one. And here's something that sounds outside the box. Tomorrow, via PBS, Henry Louis Gates, Jr., investigates the family histories of Broadway stars Audra McDonald and Andy Patinkin, discovering ancestors whose struggles laid the groundwork for their success. Again, that's tomorrow, Tuesday, through pbs.org. And the always interesting New York-based Water Well Company offers a new lab series. It starts with one called Red Rainbow. The plot? COVID-19 has hit New York and the entire city is under quarantine. Nathaniel drags his best friend out of bed to go on an adventure. When the two investigate a strange phenomenon in a basement, they are transported to a world that affords them both the chance to overcome the past and step into the future. Now, if that sounds fetching, Red Rainbow will be streamed live April 29th through May 1st only. Now, we are all Zoomed out, I assume, but I love surprises. So I tuned into a 55-minute two-hander called Sitting and Talking that turned out to be one of the nicest things I've streamed during this time. Written by Leah Ro Romeo, it stars Wendy Malick and Dan Loria, two more faces and talents you'll immediately recognize. This one covers a few months of a hesitant online dating meet and greet. Yes, the context is the pandemic, but as Malik's character says, loneliness is the real epidemic. There are touches of the political. I just realized that my country is not going to take care of me. But mostly it is highly personal and relatable material about loss, fear of loving, again, and aging. This is a production from the Miles Square Theater, but you can find it for the next several weeks on lagunaplayhouse.org. And for all you true crime fanatics, Off-Broadway's Chatillion Stage Company presents the world premiere of Deception, a new psychological thriller. The play features a cast headed by one of my faves, Jason O'Connell. Produced in the style of the classic radio play, Deception is written and directed by artistic director Deborah Whitfield. The mystery is loosely based on a notorious NYC murder case that made headlines a little over 100 years ago. This is clearly for the Dateline crowd. The Deception will be presented in two episodes, and it's available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, all major platforms. More information can be found at the Chatillion Stage Company. Finally, speaking of TV stars, George Clooney, Juliana Margulies, and other cast members from the drama ER reunite to reminisce in a new installment of Stars in the House. That's 5 p.m. this Thursday. It's free, but donations are accepted. Again, that's starsinthehouse.com. Well, the Oscars have come and gone. The Tonys have no date as of yet, but things are looking up. In the meantime, Jill, lots of choices this week, a, a most unusual array, I would say. And the feeling that uh, things are uh, uh, starting to uh, sprout in springtime is uh, unmistakable, yes? 
I would say yes. I would say yes. Again, not I'm not talking big. I'm not talking Broadway, but certainly the small inventive uh, theaters are, are are doing their work. You know, trying to stay afloat, which uh, which they really have to deal with. Uh, and you know, I'm always knows? I'm always behind in my uh, newspaper reading, but uh, I did notice that uh, a couple of weeks ago. So probably from last week, the week before last, there's a lot of uh, uh, there are some reviews of things that are actually you know where 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 you go and said I know what it was New York Philharmonic, uh, you could go and hear something and then there is a there is an exhibition that you can go and see something and Definitely. then there was a Broadway thing. you know and it's just it feels I know I alluded to this last. Uh, yeah, yeah. Last week, but when um, you know how long it took to once 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 all the planes were grounded after yeah. September 11th, you know it took 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 a took a couple of weeks to get everything back going the way that it was. Yeah, I, I would agree. Uh, definitely in the music world and the dance world, things are being done. Um, some are being done out. You know, they're all being done with a lot of precautions. That has to be understood. If you're going to go to theater, you're going to be probably. You're going to be wearing a mask, possibly, or, or maybe earphones. A lot of these, the one playing in New York, blindness. Uh, I think you wear earphones. You know, they're they're almost being done. A lot of them are almost being done like radio plays, very immersive, but creative. You know, these are creative people, and they're trying to they're trying their best to give us something to watch or listen to, and right now to hope for. Stage right or not, with Michelle Willens, produced in the studios of Robin Hood Radio. RobinHoodRadio.com